was really just a full breakdown, you know, everything you need to learn, basically the A to Z. From where to start, exactly what to do, how to do it, all the systems and programs. The resources and things that were given throughout the training was just phenomenal. What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Welcome to the Deal Desk. Today, we got a very special guest. I'm looking forward to it. He's a killer out there in Arizona. Check us out. If this is your first time watching, the rules are simple. You can head over to the reitoolbox.com, submit your leads to be called live. This is completely free, whether you're starting out, whether you're seasoned. Bring your team on. Learn from this. I know people that binge watch this and take bits and pieces of other guests' styles, apply in their own, and they have a lot of success. Um, free. The only thing I ask for is on YouTube, click that like and subscribe button, help spread the word, go ahead and share it. Um, today's guest is a killer out there. He's out of Phoenix, Arizona. His name's Mr. Art Sanchez. Let's bring him up and get to know him a little bit. Art, how you doing, man? Man, I'm pumped. It's man. I just came in here. Just want to serve and help anybody that's struggling on getting deals right now. Mm. All right. So ask questions. I'm again, I'm an open book. I'm here to help you guys out. Let's go ahead and get it, man. Awesome, man. So before we make some life calls, who is our, where does he come from? What's his background? Yeah. So I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, right? Um, for a lot of you folks that don't know Phoenix, Arizona, I used to grow up in uh, the West side of Phoenix, which is the hardest part. Um, Man, let me tell you, it, you know, growing up, it was definitely tough. You know, I grew up with a single mom, right? I had a brother, two sisters. So really, we had to take care of ourselves. Our mom used to work two jobs day and night, man, try to provide for us. And I didn't have a father figure. So what I decided to do, man, is I choose the streets. So, you know, I was hanging around with, with, with you know, the, 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 the kids and that, that decided to go to a different route, man, which mm. game banging and all that stuff. And man, I, I've been through so much in life, um, but I got myself out of that lifestyle. Thank God, man. Um, and I got with my girlfriend. Now she's my wife, uh, Daniela. And uh, we, we had our firstborn um, and I had to learn how to grow up. You know, I was 17 years old and my mom, she was like, you know what? You know, you're a grown man now, you know, so what's what's next? I was like, really deciding, like, damn, like, what's next? So I was like, you know, I was towards it. I was balancing, like, you know, the friends and all that gang life. And it's like now time to grow up. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to leave all that behind and I'm going to man up. So I decided to go ahead and just, um, you know, start working and, uh, you know, providing for my family. So I had to really grow up at a young age, man. Yeah. Yep. So um, other than that, like once um, I got everything going, then it's like, you know what? I can't go back to my mom's house. So I really learned. I had to learn at a young age to grind. So even at a young age, man, I remember in elementary, like I used to slay candies, you know, to get a buck. I used to go door to door, man, asking, asking these neighbors, hey, do you want your car washed? Right. Do you need to cut your, your grass cut? Like I was at top of entrepreneur at a young age. So I learned how to, I had to learn how to hustle at a young age. Right. So now when growing up, um, I was like, you know what? Like, I don't want to go back to mom's house. I have to grow up. I have now a family to provide. So man, I really had to learn how to get it by any means. And, uh, you know, so I decided to go ahead and, um, you know, build something for my family and, you know, um, I had my, my ups and downs in life, man. Let's just say that, right? Um, I've been through so much in life where it's like, you know, I could have faced life in prison or death, right? Mm. Because I'm, I was really like a hard head. I didn't want to go broke. I was like, you know what? I'm going to make everything I got to do to to learn how to just go ahead and provide for my family. So that was really embedded in my brain to learn how to just, hey, Today, it's, you know, you're going to get it or you're going to lose it all. So what's 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 your choice? 
So that man, I, that was right there in my head every single day. Yeah. Right. So other than that, man, like I was really, uh, I got into, I got out of that lifestyle and, uh, I started like flipping cars. Um, and I always been good at the street sales, man. Like, you know, so that was me. Right. Um, I was really good at, at selling people in person and, um, uh, and um, yeah, I started selling cars. And after that, man, like that didn't work out for me. I was like trying to figure out what's next for me, what's really next for me. And I was like, you know what? I uh, stumbled upon real estate wholesaling, right? Um, I first uh, watched Nick uh, Nick Rias. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I don't know if you know him, man. He's out in Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, and and I that's why I was like doing my research. I'm like, holy shit. I always wanted to get into real estate, but I didn't know how I was going to get into real estate. Right. So I started doing my research more and then I stumbled upon as well. Carlos Reyes, all the all in guys. I'm like, holy shit. These guys are from from, you know, from the same streets as me that, you know, their, their, their backgrounds are similar to mine. So I'm like, holy shit. Like that put some man that, that, that really motivated me. So I was like, so I was thinking to myself, I'm like, you know what, from back then, I was like, you know what, like. A lot of these real estate people, like you gotta have money to make it, right? To get into a real estate game. But it wasn't really like that. And I was like, man, I stumbled upon a wholesale. I did my research. So I'm like, no, like I could really go ahead and start, you know, taking on these properties without buying it and all that. Mm -hmm. So I had to really uh, I had to I had to go ahead and change my reprogramming, man. My programming to and reprogrammed it to it's like, you know what? I can make this happen. If these guys could do it, I could go ahead and do it, man. Mm -hmm. So I started my journey three years ago and let me tell you it was tough it was tough man because at that point in time in my life i was really going through depression i was lost in life i didn't know what the hell i wanted to do like i'll be honest with you man because i lost it all i was like man like first off i don't want to go i don't want to get a nine to five i don't want to go to the streets you know i have a family i'm like you know what i was down on my knees i was like you know what god um Give me an opportunity and i'm gonna make sure I'm, I'm 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 gonna pay you back right and um man from right there it's like i i stumbled upon that real estate like i mentioned and i i got hooked man like i i never found like fall into something that i was like you know what like this is exactly what i'm gonna do right i fell in love with real estate so i was the one that that took that leap of faith man and decided to go ahead and um uh you know start start implementing a couple strategies and try to get my first deal while my wife was pregnant right with our third child and she was the only one that was working mm. she was the one that was providing man so she was like i got your back i got your back i'm like all right then i got this right so i was like in my head i was like i can't go back i gotta move forward i gotta make this shit happen so man it took me four long months to get my first deal but throughout the whole time frame first off i never had a a, a a a job where i had to talk on the phones with the sellers or any of that i had a street sell knowledge but really like locking up deals on the phones i had none of that yeah so man when i was getting on the phones i remember because i started off cold calling and a lot of these folks um you guys are actually cold calling right now if you guys are not cold calling you guys just you know decided to go ahead and get some cold callers and 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 now you're just focused on acquisition let me tell you one thing cold calling is definitely it's definitely tough it, it, it's, it's definitely because now it's like you know you're, you're pounding on the phones hoping that you have a uh, seller is actually interested now when you get somebody interested now it's like you got to close them so, so it's a lot of work it's definitely a lot of work and um so man I was I was cold calling and uh, let me tell you like I was stumbled upon my words I don't know exactly how how to come over objections so what I was doing I think I was telling you this Stephen what I was doing man I was I was doing my research on a lot of these um, these salespeople and how do they close deals live and I started like implementing I had my pen and paper and I was like you know what every word by word I'll go ahead and write it down boom even with you. Right. I, I used to drop so much videos, man, and so much knowledge about, you know, how to lock up deals. And I used to watch videos and I used to write it down, write it down. You, so much other people in the game. 
right? And then I end up mixing it up my own stuff. I made it my own way. And that's the beauty of what this is all about is yeah. you're not, I don't expect you to learn everything that I know. There's so much people that have so much gain, so much value to give. You're going to learn it. You're going to get it piece by piece and then blend it up, make your own. So, yeah, man, I, you know, it took me four long months to finally get my first deal and the excitement I had. And this is what happened. Let me tell you the story, man. Yeah. Uh, so when I first got my first deal, right, it was initially $5,000. This deal was in Las Vegas, by the way. Right. It was this, this seller that did, wasn't quite motivated to sell, but only for the right price. Right. Mm -hmm. so there's 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 a certain way how to go about those type of those sellers. Right. You're not going to go in there and straight. Hey, try to close them right away because they're not. First off, they're not even motivated. First. Right. Yeah. You got to really learn is why they're looking to sell at, to begin with. Obviously, is it the price? Right. If it's not the price, what exactly is it? So. I ended up closing them. I ended up making the $5,000, but I did not close on it just yet. I was like, you know what? This is not enough. I was like, because I was thinking to myself, I have to put all this back into my business. My wife was, uh, she was about five months pregnant, right? And she told me, she was like, you don't get, uh, it's crazy. Two weeks before that happened, I got my first deal. My wife told me, hey, you don't get a deal within the next month, you're going to have to go get a job. Mm. So that's what like put fueled in me, man. That's what fueled me up yeah. to get my first deal. So I got my, my, my deal, right? $5,000. I was like, you know what? This is not enough. So I decided to do something that I do not recommend you guys do. <laughs> you know, like, uh, price drop the seller, man. Yeah. Price drop the seller right then and then, man. Right? Because once I got the buyer, I was like, yeah. shit. I'm gonna need five thousand dollars, and I was like, "Man, shit, this is not enough. It's not enough." So I was already thinking about what's my next play. I needed to go ahead and uh, purchase a bigger list. I had to uh, um, get about three more cold callers. Well, three cold callers. I didn't have cold callers at the time, mm -hmm. and um, so that's what I was thinking. I was like, five thousand is not gonna cut it." So I price dropped him. He hung up on me. He did not like it whatsoever. And that night, bro, I kid you not, I was like, I couldn't sleep. I could not sleep because I was like, man, I, for being greedy, you, you messed this deal up. All right. I was like, all right, cool. You know what? If God wanted it to be like that, it happened. The next day, I was sitting, I was sitting down, man. I was like, you know what? I'm going to call that guy. I'm going to call his ass. I called him. And he answered, man. He answered. And I, and I remember this like it was yesterday. And he was like, all right. Hey, how are you? I'm like, shit. I'm doing well. How, what's going on with you? You know? He's like, oh, you know what? I was um, such and such and had no service and gave me that whole that whole story, right? Yeah. And I was like, all right. Well, look. Is this something I'm going to be able to move forward? And so we go ahead and get this property off your hands. He's like, you know what? I thought about it. Let's go ahead and do it. I made eleven thousand dollars, man, on my first deal. Wow. Yeah, and that right there is where I just took off because I kept throwing it all back into my business. Yeah, that's amazing, man. That's such an amazing story because a lot of people can resonate to that story, including myself. I mean, going through really tough times, you hit rock bottom. The only way to go is up. Yes, what sir. would you tell people? Because that takes a specific mindset, you see, because everybody's going through something, right? And a lot of reasons people get into this business is to get financial freedom. But a lot of people, you know, it's really hard to develop that mindset, especially if they're not even good with any kind of communication with people. What, what advice would you give somebody that's maybe going through a tough time right now, whether they're starting out, whether they're kind of hit a wall in their business and they need to get better at communicating with people and improving their sales skills to close more deals. Absolutely. So for me, what helped me out was I uh, I didn't know anything to begin with on first off how to pull the list, how to get a dialer. I didn't know none of that. I was trying mm -hmm. for dollars to begin with. So I was like, you know what? I found these guys that were you know doing a deal every month or every couple months, right? But they were active. Mm -hmm. So. The guys they end up letting me stay uh work at their house to and then from there they you know they helped me out and um 
I end up getting the hang of it, right? And then right after that, it's like, I already know the steps. Now it's like how to close deals. What's next? So the thing is, man, it's like I was, I was, I was calling, 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 and I was just telling my wife, I was like, well, what the hell do I like? What am I doing wrong? Well, she was like, have you listened to your calls? I'm like, no, no, I never thought of it. She's like, well, let's go and listen to your calls because this is what they do at our job. Mm -hmm. So she started listening to my calls, man, and actually have recordings right now as we speak to um, um, that uh, where I used to make some live calls back in the day. And let me tell you, now I look back, I'm like, holy shit, like, why did I say that? <laughs> I didn't know how to position myself, how to talk to sellers to begin with. I was just talking, 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 talk. Yeah. And the thing is, when you over explain something, what happens? Like, it just doesn't come off right. So that's what my wife was listening to. She was like, first off, you're stumbling upon your words because you're talking way too much. Now it's like everybody says it's 80, 20, right? Let, let the sellers talk about 80% and then you talk 20%, right? Um, but yeah, I was just talking too much. And, and a lot of the things that I was trying to say, I didn't have knowledge on, on to, sh to back me up on certain things. Right. I know what 1031 exchange was. I didn't know what, uh, you, you know, uh, a buy and hold investor exactly what they're, what, what they do, like certain things like that. Right. Now it's like, man, like I do my research. Right. But back then I didn't know anything. Right. So. That was one. I was really good at relating, right? I was really good at relating. Um, because one thing is I always come in with good energy, right? Mm. Um, and then and then as well as um I was talking too quick and I was in mirror the seller, like you know, tonality means everything when you're on the calls, right? And we were talking too fast, and the seller's old, about seven years old. You can really hear that. They're like a little yeah. bit older. And you're over here talking, you sound like a sales guy, that's a turnoff. Yep. They're going to go hang up. So that's what she was listening to. And she was helping me out. So I was like, boom, I got the hang of it. Max is like, I started doing my research on a lot of these acquisitions that were, you know, putting content out there, you know, just like you. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was really like watching the videos. Right. There are certain liners that, that I picked up from you. Like one of the liners I like from you is like, hey, we don't buy every property that we come across. A lot mm -hmm. of the times the sellers want over ask um, uh, AR, um, retail price. Yeah. We usually have a team of realtors that could definitely assist you with. Right. So mm -hmm. that one, like th that line right there is what I used. Um, and then there's other, those other uh, things I picked up from other acquisitions, but that's one thing I could tell you, right. Uh, for the audience, if you're struggling with the deal, you might not know it all. It's okay. But one thing is you got to listen to your calls. You have to learn how to role play and do your research on these acquisitions. Right. I throw a lot of content out there. I actually have a video on my Instagram that I have a live call, right? Listen to it. Take some notes. Don't use everything that I say. Use a little bit that you like and go ahead and run with it. Simple as that. I love that, man. Thanks so much for sharing that. Where can people get a hold of you? Do you have, um, I mean, you got social media, but what's the best way to get a hold of you? Do you offer any kind of training or courses or any kind of workshops? Where can people learn from you? Yeah, so we're actually um, we're actually uh, we're going to launch pretty soon. Um, we're actually filming it right now. Um, my acquisitions course. Um, so I built this called the, it's a six step process, right? Mm -hmm. And and the thing is, a lot of these acquisitions they don't know exactly from how to start and how to end the call. They're just all over the place. Yeah. And now with me, like since we have a, a virtual acquisitions team. We had to really focus on exactly how to break the steps down for them to understand it. And it would just be a plug and play for them, you know, to run with it afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I built a six step process, which it starts off with the intro. It starts, it starts off and then second uh, qualifying, right? Uh, third is report building, right? Uh, the next one is negotiation. The following one is um, urgency and then the close. Right. But we, we, we break it down and then exact. And then we, 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 we have uh, several uh, questions to ask as you go. We don't believe in really scripts. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but that right there kind of um, helps them understand exactly if the call goes south, you redirect them to that question 
and it'll go your way. So mm. we're going to launch it pretty soon. Um, but other than that, you guys can find me on Instagram, CEO Art Sanchez, and then on Facebook, Art Sanchez. And again, I'm going to open books. So if you're struggling with anything or have any questions, get at me. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for sharing that. You ready to make some live calls? Man, I've been ready. I just hope everybody has a pen and paper to take these notes down. And this is how I do things, right? I do a little bit different than everybody else, right? Um, when I'm on these calls, okay, I'll put the seller on mute and I'll explain exactly why I said this and what the seller is going to say and what they're thinking. And as well, drop some comments, drop some comments, exactly, um, you know, what you want to be, uh, what, what you want me to say. Like, if you have any questions, I'm here to help. Okay, so drop some comments, but I'm ready. Let's go ahead and get this. Love that. So, and it does take a certain amount of confidence to talk to the audience while you're in a live call, which is awesome. So um, we're going to pick up right where we left off. We have a lead here on uh, Lincoln Street, Liberty, Texas. Um on your end, it's number 105. Um, yes, sir. We'll call that one. So, guys, turn your volume up. Write down notes. At the end of the live calls, we're going to do any questions. So, any questions you may have for Art, drop them in the chat, and we'll get to them. Okay, perfect. You guys remember this house right here, this lady. <laughs> so, do um... – do me a favor. So um, I'm going to be on these calls and then um, you know what to do, man. I'm going to go ahead and do my thing. Let's go. You always got to come in with confidence every single time. Don't doubt yourself and how the call could go bad. Always tell yourself and picture yourself how the call is going to go. Okay. Because once you throw it out there, it's already out there. So, so just, just keep a reminder on that right there. One of you are trying to. All right, perfect. Is it ringing? Yeah. Okay. So it's not ringing ring just right. yet. It's not okay. ringing just yet. It's going to start. There it goes. All right. Can you hear? Just throw. Thumbs up. Yeah, we can hear it clearly. answering you guys gotta remember we always double dial every single time sometimes the deal's good i dial three times hello alice how are you today i'm good hey that's a blessing right you happy it's friday I say you happy that it's Friday? Yes. A amen to that. Alice, uh, so really quick, uh, this is Art. Uh, and you actually spoke to my colleague, uh, Noah, regarding to your property, the one that's on Lincoln. Why? Does that ring a bell? Uh, not really. Okay. <laughs> I bet you've been getting a lot of calls, right? Right. You get a lot of folks wasting your time? All right. Well, look, Alice, the thing is, I'm not here to waste your time whatsoever, but I got some good news. So I actually spoke to my colleague, Noah, right? And um, he spoke to you very briefly about your property. He gave you a really good offer because he did not actually come to me and get this approved just yet. But um, I wanted to ask you, right, is it still something that you are willing to look to sell your property for the right price? 
Okay, and did you have a certain time frame? No. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. I'm not sure if you're married or not, but I'm married. And I know if I, my wife did something without me knowing, I'd be very furious. Is your husband on board? There is not. Even better. We don't got to talk to the husband. Now, look, Alice, um, you know, I told you in the beginning, um, I don't want to waste your time whatsoever. And you have a lot of people wasting your time. Now, if I gave you a price that actually made sense and I still have this um, price approved, is this something that you're willing to move forward by today to get at least the process started? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, let's do this. Uh, what's your email? It's Gail, G-A-I-L, underscore. Mm -hmm. T-U. in business for a very long time and it's rarely that i hear that hotmail.com one how long you been having that email for forever <laughs> well look um what, let me ask you this though what's your plans after selling this property to us what is what what's your plans after selling this property to us Mm -hmm. mm, okay. So this is your primary residence? Yes. See, no one did not tell me this. Okay, okay. So you you're planning on moving with your daughter. That's good. That's good of you. Right. Okay. And is is your is your daughter kind of excited too that you're moving in with her? Well, she, she lives at the house now. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay, got you, got you, got you. So we we plan on doing um, after you sell and 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 have the money. We plan on uh, taking a vacation. You take. Oh, how long you been retired for? Um, See again, she is kind of motivated. I'm at, I'm, I'm building a report. This is where it's very important. Don't make it all about the property. Gotcha. Yeah, my social security. Oh. What'd you do before, if I may ask? I was a terminal manager for a truck company. Oh, really? For a truck yeah, company? I also got an accounting degree. Oh, an accounting degree? Is that still active? Yes, uh -huh. Oh, okay, okay. So you, do you have any clients right now with that? Nice, nice. We might be uh, be able to use you. <laughs> Do you really? Oh yeah, we did come tax. Oh, right now it's pretty crazy, right? It is crazy. Yeah. Uh, so, so usually, how does that how does that process works? So, and, and, and what you charge on that? It depends on. What I'm right here trying to spark a conversation because I'm getting the contract ready to send it to her, where I'm going to direct her to sign it. Okay. Got you. Okay. Okay. Let's do, uh, hopefully we could work together because, uh, you know, we do have several other companies as well. And I'll tell you one thing, our account is kind of running behind, you know, but it sounds to me that you're, you're pretty much, uh, you know what you're doing and, um, uh, you take care of your clients very well. Right. I'm to keep coming back. Hey, <laughs> that's, that's what, Hey, I like that. <laughs> They keep coming back. So there's a reason why you're still doing what you're doing then. Yeah, I just got an email from a guy that had moved, he moved up to Ohio. Oh, nice. He wants to send me his stuff through the email. Mm, okay, okay. And how long does it does a process usually work? How, how long does he does it usually take? the process so once we we submit everything to you how long does the process take to uh to complete everything probably about two days two days nice 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 yeah. okay well you sound sounds to me you're pretty quick at what you do then right yeah i like that so is it so your daughter knows that you're selling your property too 
Ah, oh, somewhat. Okay. Okay. What do you think she's really gonna say after you move in with her? You're just gonna show up with your bags oh, in the front of the house? She hasn't found. She hasn't found her the property she bought yet. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Got you. Got you. So, is this something that um, we could definitely go ahead and start the process? And then, um, how? What's your time frame of wanting to close? By the way. three months three months yeah. okay okay so look uh, let me explain to you how the process works so basically um we're gonna go ahead and uh, send you a simple two-page agreement all right now once that is signed we're gonna go ahead and send that over to the title company okay now the title company they're gonna run a title search just to make sure everything is free and clear now once everything's free and clear it usually takes about 35 days closing a property but we could always close whenever you're ready. Is that something that you might be interested in? Right, yeah. Yeah, we're going to help you out. So that's exactly what I was getting to. All right. And I like the whole, by the way, Alice, um, even if we don't move forward on this one right here, okay, I at least want to go ahead and um, keep communicating with you to see how we could work together because you are an accountant, by the way. So other than that, look, this is where we at. Right. So like I was saying, Noah came to me and see if we get this property approved at the eighty five thousand. And I was like, you know what? There is no way that I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this approved. The numbers didn't quite make sense. And what I decided to do, I was like, you know what? Because he, he was like going back and forth to me. And then I was like, you know what? As long as we can move forward by today to get, at least get the process started and it allows us to at least secure the funds, we could go ahead and um, I'm willing to accept that to 85,000. So he came to you and he was like, Hey, so we got that approved at the 85. And for some reason, I don't know if, if the call failed, but you just hung up on him. So I was like, well, let me, that's kind of strange. Yes, because he told me I've got to go in there and fight for you. Huh? Is that and, what he told you? Yeah. Yes, he did. And it sounded really fishy. See, you put too much pressure, and, and the, the sellers understand this. They're not stupid. And he said, hey, I got it. Mm. I just, I don't know. I just didn't want to go in there and fight for you. Is it, was it, let me ask you this. And, uh, and, and like I said, you've been honest with me since the beginning. I mean, why why didn't you uh, move forward, especially at the good price? Was it because uh, you, didn't, you didn't feel right working with Noah? Was that it? I didn't know it was a legit company. Oh, listen. See, you're very smart. And if somebody called me and I didn't know who the heck they were, I'd be very skeptical. So I understand where you're coming from, by the way, Alice. I don't blame you. It's okay. Yeah. But one thing I could tell you I now. Know. Yes, ma'am. One thing I could tell you is a good thing is that you, you're, you're definitely going to start working with us because um, I mean, we, we do buy a lot of these properties, especially in Liberty. Um, and, and one thing is, it's like, as long as, as you're serious and definitely want to go ahead and sell this property, I'm willing to make this work for you. Right. But I want you to feel comfortable working with us. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to make sure Alice that this is going to be the smoothest transaction that you ever dealt with in your life. That's going to be a promise. Second is I'm going to make sure that, um, that did you need, let me ask you this, because um, I'm the I'm the one that actually gives approvals of, of, of the time frame. So would you need the money of um, once we close and then um, just rent the property back to you for those remainder uh, two months? Because you say you need three months, right? Yeah. Did you need did you need those two months as well? Did you need those two extra months? So the process usually takes 30 days, right? Uh -huh. But you said your time frame is about three months. Is that right, Alice? Right. Yes, I, I, I do. I, she's got to find the home. <laughs> she's got to close on it. Okay. She had found one. She had found one for the appraisal didn't come out right. Mm -hmm. She had found one for the appraisal didn't come out the way they needed it to. The thing is, if you come in very strong, they're going to feel that. Be, be genuine. Speak from the heart. 
I completely understand that, Alice. And and one thing is, like I told you, um, I'm willing to give you more time. We I don't do this for anybody else, but I mean, if we're gonna work together, especially if you're gonna be running our books, look, let's go ahead and make this happen. Um, because we really don't trust anybody as well running our books. And I, I now understand where you're coming from, but let's go ahead and make um get this property off your hands. All right. And then um, we're going to definitely gonna be working together for sure. Um, you're not busy, right? Um, if you go ahead and start working with us. Yeah, I'm, I'm busy. Okay. But you make time for your clients, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, Alice, do me a huge favor. Can you go ahead and open up the email um, I sent you? I just want to verify everything that, that, that we agreed on is on here. And I'm going to go over it with you. And this doesn't mean that we're going to close today, Alice. It's just we're going to go ahead and start the process, okay? Just go ahead and open up your email. On smooth light. Coming from? It's, it's coming from my uh, true buyers, by the way. Hello? Yep. Yep, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here, Alice. I yeah. wanted to verify really quick. Um... um so the email, the email is it uh, G I what? And then it's a hot. No. All right. No, no, no. What is it? No, no. Give me a second. It's just give me a second. It's just G. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, okay. Underscore. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Ten two. C is in cat. Mm -hmm. A. Ten. T U. Ah, T U. Okay, so it's G A I L underscore C A N T U, right? Right. Perfect. Right. Perfect. I don't know. I switched service. I I switched service, uh, Alice. And I'll tell you one thing. You have T Mobile. No, I have Verizon. Ah, that's why you don't have that trouble like I do. It comes in and now, so. I need to definitely upgrade for sure. You, how long have you been having Verizon for? Uh, probably 30 years. Ooh, years. It's a long I time. Had, I had a flip phone at first. Well, actually, I had mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. Got you. Okay. Well, go ahead and refresh your email for me one more time. No, refresh your email one more time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. Yep, yep. <clears throat> Are you ready for the weekend now? That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Don't be too aggressive. Yeah, so that's a deposit that we're going to go ahead and deposit into the title company so they could run a title search. So they're not going to run anything until they have something in there already. So once the title comes back, that's when we're going to go ahead and send all our funds uh, to the escrow. And um, let me ask you this now. Um, how would you like your funds? Would you like a check or would we like a wire? You want to paint that picture for them already? Uh, you know, I tell everybody, Alice, I tell everybody, um, I, it's best to have a wire because once we close yeah. on the property, you get paid right there and then. Now, if you would have got a check, it would have it would have taken twenty four hours. I'm not sure how you know how, how much uh, how fast you need the money. Let me, let me do you do me a favor. Mm -hmm. 
favor and give me a couple of days to mm. run through this company. Let's do this. Um, let's do this. Cause I want to make sure, like I said, somebody called me, if I didn't know who they were, I'd be very skeptical. You're in front of a computer, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Can you look us up really quick? Sure. I'm the one that takes my time. I'm not going to do nothing really quick. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Cause if somebody rushed me too. listen, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and hang up on this. So, I, I just want to make sure it's 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 really the trust, right? You don't you don't have trust in us, right? Right. I mean, if I sign this agreement, I might be signing my house away. So that's why that's why I wanted to go over it with you this agreement. And and again, the state of a state of let me tell you this, okay? The state of Texas that you are not obligated to sell the property if you don't want to. Because at the end of the day, this is your this is your primary residence, right? Okay. And another thing too, that it's not final until you're at the closing table. Okay. It's not final until you're at the closing table. So this doesn't, this right here, even if you sign something, it doesn't mean that you're, you're, you're signing your property away. And then that's why I said, so do me a favor. Cause I want to make sure you, you feel very comfortable working with us, Alice, and you're a type of woman, which I completely respect that you don't like to be being rushed, but you want to first do your research, right? Yes. Okay. So just do me the favor. I just want to make sure that you do find our website. Um, go ahead and type in www. Let me know. Um, once you, all right. So www. T R U B U Y E R S dot com. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why it's very important to have a website. So, a lot of the time, sellers don't trust you. And let me know once uh, once you see the the true buyers. Do you see do you see the the, the true buyers right there? Mm -hmm. Do you see? Are you are you on the website already? Yes, I am. Okay, perfect. Do you see do you see where is the company's name is True Buyers? Right. Do you see now the agreement where it says True Buyers? And on the agreement, by the way, it does say um, buy in between True Buyer LLC and yeah. and then your name right there. So it's not where it's like, hey, a different name, because that'd be a very suspicious right there. And then on the bottom of the agreement too, Alice, I want to tell you, it says um, on the last on the last uh, part on five, it says miscellaneous provisions. It does stay on B because you're very educated, which I respect. This is the reason why we could definitely have a good conversation. So on B, it does state that it says no modification or change to this agreement shall be valid or binding upon buyer or seller unless in writing and executed by the parties. So I was just pretty much stating that we're not allowed to make any changes whatsoever because you're going to have a hard copy as well. Okay, but it says also June the third. Honor before. Can't be out by June the third. It says honor before. How soon? How how soon are you are you looking? You're you're trying to close. So what we could do here, like I said, uh -huh. this is the part. Yes, sir, I understand. Yes, ma'am. My daughter has not found a house yet. Yeah, and so we can't do mm -hmm. anything. Absolutely. We can't move until she finds a house. Now, like I said, what we could do as well, because nothing is said and done until you're at the closing table. Because even if you don't work with us, Alex, that is completely fine. But I just want you to know this. So if you don't like how the process is going, if you don't like the company during the transaction, you have all the right to decide right there and then and be like, hey, you know what? I'm not going to go ahead and move forward on it. Right. But if you like how we work, you like the process, then you like how we how we helped you out on letting you stay in the property until 
you find another property, which you said about you need three months total. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. We could definitely work with you. That's why. And then we could what I could do too, Alice, before we close on this property, once you go to the closing table and sign all the HUDs, right, all that paperwork, um, we're going to before you do all that, we're going to send you and it's called an addendum that pretty much clarifies on um, how many months you need um, to stay in the property. And we'll work with you because that's one thing that's different between our company and our company. Alice is that we don't just buy properties. All right. We're more like a real estate solution company. Okay. It's like, you know what, if you need help with this type of situation, you do, you do want to sell. We still need another place to go to afterwards. We do have, by the way, I think this might, um, we have a program. I think you might, uh, you might be interested in. So we have a team of realtors that could definitely help you out. Meanwhile, while this, this is still in transaction, help you find the property. And once you find that property, you're, you say you're looking to buy it okay. or you, uh -huh. I look, my boss got here. I've got to talk to her. I'll call you back. Is it all right? So let me ask you this. Um, oh, she hung up. She hung up. Fuck. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. That was very smooth because originally that call did not go well and you did a complete 360 on it i mean everybody's loving it everybody's loving it she felt very comfortable with you can yeah. you kind of um you know share with the audience like you focus more on the solution she gave you objection stuff you brought up the website obviously she had to get off we don't know if she's lying or not but I, I feel like you could definitely close a deal. Something she mentioned is that she needs um, help finding another place to move to. How do you usually deal with people like that that need to relocate? You know. So in, in the qualifying questions, we do ask. So let me ask you this, Mr. Seller. Uh, what's your plans after selling this property? Have you have you found a new, a new especially if it's uh, if it's uh, owner occupied? Mm -hmm. right? If it's occupied, they have no sentimental value most of the time. So they don't give a shit if they yeah. sell but this property, especially it's owner occupied, they still they need to find another property. So our qualifying question is, what's your plans after selling this property? And they're like, well, I, I'm not sure. A lot of the times is they're they're not willing to move forward right there. So you know yeah. you cannot put much pressure on that seller. But again, if you come in there with solutions, because we collect ammo, this is what we do. We collect ammo. We collect as much information as possible. Because if you're just talking and talking and talking and talking. You're not going to be listening to the seller, especially active listening, by the way, guys, mm. active listening means everything, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm over here listening to the seller exactly what the problems are with what's stopping them from actually selling the property. Mm -hmm. So when sellers are like, well, I don't know what I'm doing next. Okay, perfect. Okay. And then now it's like you collect all the ammo and you're ready to go ahead and, and let it all out and give them the benefits of your company and give them the price. You're letting them know exactly what you could do for them. And I explained to them, hey, look, we're a real estate solution company, okay? We don't just buy properties. We're not your average, you call them investors. We're not them. We're more as like, you know what? If you want to sell a property, perfect. But there's a lot of these sellers that actually are going through some situations where, yes, they need to sell, but they don't have a place to go to afterwards, similar to your situation. Now we do have a program, which I believe you uh, you will definitely be interested in. We work with a team of realtors that could definitely help you relocate. Now what's happening is you're going to go ahead and try to find a property for them while you're it's, it's already going through escrow, right? Mm -hmm. You have to be the problem solver. It's not all about the properties. Yeah. That's one thing about um, me in the beginning stages was it was really about the property. And I was not focused on, you know what, listening for the problems. What's what's the objections, right? Because a lot of the time sellers, they just they just like want to hear an offer. Yeah. And 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 I weed I weed out through all the bullshit, man. Right. Yeah. That was and, really and that was, I hit them with facts. Boom. I so was like, hey, I have have an offer at, uh, have an offer um at this price. I'm surprised. I mean, why didn't you take that offer? That's a very high price. Like, sounds surprised. 
Yeah. They're going to tell you, well, I'm still looking around, see if anybody else can offer me a higher offer. A lot of times you cannot, you cannot negotiate with the type of sellers, right? Yeah. So it's a numbers game that we're playing here. All right. The more people that you, that they call and talk to, the more offers um, that you give, the more problems you can solve, the more deals that you end up getting. It's as simple as that. Awesome, man. You want to answer some questions or are you going to say something real quick? No, that's it, man. That's it. All right. You ready to answer some questions? Man, let's get it, man. Let's yeah. get it. That was, and I want everybody to realize, like, two different, like, people call this lead already, right? And it, it could be completely different outcome, right? This lady seemed very, very comfortable with you, and you address her concerns. Every concern she threw at you, you're, you put yourself in her shoes first. Yeah, I mean, if I were, if I came across that, I mean, I think I wouldn't feel comfortable. And she felt very comfortable because you could relate to her some level. But, hey, guys, drop any questions you may have. Let's answer some questions. Um, TD, what do you say? You know, you know the difference? Uh, I'm sorry to cut you off, bro. Uh, you know, the, dip, the thing is, um, it's tonality. Like, and I, I mirrored her, right? She was yeah. kind of concerned. I'm not going to go in there and aggressive and be a dick. No, I'm going to be calm and collective. All right? And I just spoke from the heart. I was like, you know what? Forget about the property. Even though it was a really good deal. And yeah. sometimes they're like, you know what? You blocked all that bullshit out on the steps. Building the report, finding a problem that you can solve. But instead, everybody's just like, because I had that, I was like, straight to the point. You got to be a problem solver. And that's what I did to, to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. But that's how I am. But anyways, guys, if you have any questions, um, go ahead and all right, everyone can see in here. All right, perfect. You got a lot of love. Everybody loved that call. That was right, probably one of the best calls we've had on the show, be honest with you. Uh, brother. Um, <laughs> that's awesome I, I appreciate you uh what do you say if they tell you to have other offers but it's like they stringing you along because you offer they're asking but they still not trying to sign the agreement so this exactly what happened with this deal right here right she got the offer that she that she threw out and somebody just went for it and and, and, and took it right and, and offered the the offer she wanted Mm -hmm. You cannot be like that. And a part of negotiation is you always got to make sure that you feel you got to make the seller feel like they won every single time. So yeah. if you give them, if you give it to them, they're going to be like, shit, it's too easy. Right now, if the deal makes sense, let's give an example. They want it 180. You're not going to give them 180. You're going to come close to 180. Shit. Even to 168 and 400 dollars. I never give them 160, 165, 170. I give I give them some like real odd numbers. Yep. And 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 they're like, no, I, I already got another offer. Well, I'm surprised. Why don't you take that offer? Yeah. Well, it seems to me that you're definitely, I mean, you're just entertaining offers at this point, right? You gotta call sellers out of the bullshit when it's needed to. You're not gonna go in there and start doing that in the beginning, but when it's time like for that um, example right there, you gotta call them out of the bullshit. And the sellers are going to realize, like, damn, like, you know what? You're right. The yep. one thing is, let me tell you this, and this is going to help the audience out. So we play a game, right, of we know where we need to be at. Let's say, for example, 150. We, we're we not going to hit them at 150. We're going to go at least to 100,000 or even 90,000, but we could go up. It's a price anchor, yep. right? What do sellers do? Sellers? They know they could be at 150. That's their max. They could they they could go ahead and, and, and take that offer, but they're gonna go high and the, but they're gonna go back down. And that's where you guys gotta be in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's what you gotta see every deal like that every single time. A lot of times, I'll be honest with you, sellers are not being honest. Just like you know, we we know what our max offer is. We're not the sellers the same way. They're not gonna give them the bottom mm -hmm. dollar number. But the more problems you can solve for them, the more uh, re the, that you can build rapport and 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 relate with them, then they're, that's gonna, that's the difference between you and the next investor, the next person that calls them. I say this: the sellers get ten to twenty dollars a day. What's going to be different between you and the next person if you're just giving them offers? What's going to be the difference? The difference is going to be if you can solve their problem, even if they don't have a problem, but they like you. 
That's going to be the difference between you and them. That's it. 100% right. All right. Um, how would you how would you follow up with this? Uh, how would a follow up with this lady sound like? So the follow up call would be, hey, I believe we get we did get disconnected. All right. This is what I'm going to do for you, because obviously it's a trust issue. Mm -hmm. it, it's what's one trust issue. Second is obviously she might just throw a number out there and, and we took it. But now it's like she doesn't want to sell being a commitment. And and as well, um, they, she hasn't found another property. So what you could do is give her some listing properties. Text, hey, this property is definitely a great fit for you. Like you're helping her out, right? Mm -hmm. Text her. And then and and then once you send that over, give them the title company's information that you work with, and be like, hey, give them a call as well, just to verify who we are. And um, that's it. You're gonna go ahead and follow up with them, not right then. Then give her some time. Hmm. By the end of the day or tomorrow morning. But that's the thing. I made it seem like it was tough that price, but I made it work. Yeah. And that's it. But that's how a follow up call would be, for sure. Is hey, did you get the prop? Did you get the address that I sent you? Something that you might be interested? In? I already reached out to my team of realtors, so they're already looking right now as we speak. Let's go ahead and start the process already. Again, did you already call? By the way, did you call the title company? Yes, perfect. Well, let's go ahead and do this. You're directing the seller every single time. We never ask. Mm. I thought so. This I'm a guy that doesn't ask for permission, but I do ask for forgiveness, right? <laughs> <laughs> so simple as that. I don't ever ask the sellers. I direct the sellers. Beautiful. All right. How important is it to have a website set up? This is important very important just like what we did right now was a great example she didn't know who the hell i was shoot americans what, what what's going on with them right now they're getting they're getting spam calls left to right with a lot with, with a lot of um um what's the word like um man i got so much thinking right now but they're getting a lot of spam calls right yeah and and you don't know what their intentions are so they don't they have trust issues so mm -hmm. what, what, how it's going to be, what's going to be different? Yes, you build a relationship with them, but now they don't trust you, right? This is how you give them a little bit more clarity of who the hell you are, right? Just to verify you're not scamming them. Hey, look, you relate with them. If somebody called me out of the blue and I don't know who the hell they were, I'd be very skeptical as well, Mr. Seller. This is what I'm going to do for you. You're in front of a computer. Listen, I'm directing. You're in front of a computer. Perfect. Go ahead and I don't know if you guys heard me. I give them my website. Go ahead and look it up. Do you see do you see everything on our website? All right. Do you see the logo on our website? Do you see does it match that agreement? I never say contract, I say agreement. Mm -hmm. But the contract's a huge that, that's definitely yeah. like a commitment. Sounds pretty binding to some people. Sounds more scary to some people. Yes, exactly. So they're like, yes, she verified. Yes. Perfect. Now what I do next is do you see the number that's right there? Go ahead and do me a favor. I'm gonna stand. I'm gonna. St I'm, I'm gonna be on standby. Go ahead and dial that number really quick. He's gonna uh, direct you to our um, our office line. Do you see that number? Perfect. Go ahead and dial it. I'll be waiting. See, I'm I'm already directing the seller. They go ahead and just dial. Sometimes they dial. A lot of times they dial and then, all right, we're good. But it's very important to have a website because it shows who the hell you are. If you don't have a website. The next thing I really recommend is giving them your title company's information. Just reach out to one of the, 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 the pre-closing attorneys or the whoever you're dealing with. Let them know and give them a heads up. Hey, Mr. Johnson's going to give you a call. Um, he's going to verify who we are, how many deals we do, and we're a legitimate company. And they're going to back you up. For sure, they're going to back you up because they want to get they, they want to get some deals too where they can make money. So it's a win-win situation for everybody. Just build that relationship with the title company. Love it. All right. Last question. How do you go about finding new acquisitions, people recruiting or hiring and training them? See, now I still have this challenge as I speak, right? Because I had acquisitions where I have my full trust. I gave them the whole breakdown and they decided to go ahead and take off and run with it. Right. And, and start wholesaling itself. 
But a lot of times you cannot think like a scarcity mindset of like that's going to happen again. So it's just like, hey, you're going to run, you're going to bring in people, bring in people, social media, right? Uh, wise hire, like stuff like that, indeed. Um, and and you're you're gonna you're, you're gonna bring a lot of people. We have a saying: it's like you hire fast. No, you you hire you hire slow, fire fast. Yeah. Right. So you're gonna go through a lot of people, but once you find that right person, go ahead and keep them. But I want you to understand this, and you might not know, you you might not know this too. Uh, oh, you do know this for sure. Every um, good acquisition, they're only lease. They're only lease. But it's tough to keep them for a the long term, but they're only lease. So just make sure you have that back in your mind and you have enough people coming in. So if that does happen, you're not depending on your best acquisition. You have more coming in. So just always keep that in mind. Yep. Awesome, man. Listen, today was awesome. Uh, it was a great call. It, it sounded completely different than the first time that person got contact with different outcome. Um, I really appreciate you hopping on here, man. You have any any final words you want to say to the audience before you get off? Listen, um, you don't have to take everything that I say and run with it. Take portions of it, but learn from everybody else. And that's the importance of it. I have something going on. Um, a good buddy of mine, Eric Klein, he has, he has uh, a sales process too, and he's doing training. There's a lot of folks in this industry who are doing this, okay? But that's the point is uh, learn from everybody and mix it up your own and run with it. But guys, thank you guys so much to invest in, within your time, yourself and your time. But I appreciate it. Awesome, guys. All right, guys, make sure you click that like and subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.